Alright guys, so starting off this episode, episode, yeah, starting off this episode, um, I'm actually in my mom's car right now, and um, we're taking the Beamer, um, I'm going to meet up with uh, the guy who installed the management on my car, um, he's hooking it up, guy from DS Custom, I'll put their, probably put their Instagram somewhere around here, somewhere, you'll see it. Um, he's hooking it up with some airline, um, which is, oh god, like I said, he's going to hook me up with some airline, which is awesome, um, and then we're going to come back and I'm going to try and find the source of, I'm going to come back, I'm going to try and find the source of the leak, um, I'm going to look at where the hole is, and I'm going to see if I can notice that there's any rubbing, or if it looks like it hit something and tore a hole in it or whatever and then see if I can't um, find a way to fix it um, so it won't happen again because that's what I really want to avoid is just doing all this work and then having it happen again uh, so I'm gonna head over to his place right now and uh, we're gonna get some extra line alright guys so I got some good news uh, let me see if I can get some good lighting here good news we got a hair hose, and it has these cool fittings. Hopefully you guys can see that. Focus, maybe? I don't know. So these are basically like the fittings that come with the bags uh, to hook them up, except they're both a female end. So that way I'll be able to find the leak, cut the leak out, and then reconnect the line with these. And then my plan is to get some fuel line from like AutoZone or something, some thicker fuel line, and and cover this fitting after I fix the leak cover it with that so hopefully if it was rubbing or anything inside the car then hopefully that way it doesn't happen again we need to look at the hose and see if we can see any spots where the hose was rubbing any evidence of it rubbing on anything in there uh, to see what actually caused it alright so before we go ahead and try to fix that leak with the little fitting um, I first want to take a look at um, the line and see if we can't find the actual leak itself. So what we have to do Alright, so I'm going to try and disconnect the air hose from the braided line right now and then possibly see if I can get it to come out through the engine bay. I want to see if I can grab it through the engine bay because I can see it in the back. Um, I might try to show you guys right now. Let's see. It's, I know it's dark but the uh, Air hose is actually right here. You can't, oh, they, you can kind of see it right here right where my finger is right here. That little black line that is the air hose. So I know it goes from right there into the wheel well, and I know the leak is around there somewhere. So, first step is to disconnect it from the braided hose. Alright, so we have good news, guys. I was actually um, following the air hose into the engine bay. And I just turned on the car and I wanted to see if I could hear the leak from the engine bay. And I could and I actually I actually went and touched the line and as soon as I touched it I felt the spot where the air was coming out. So we did find the leak and it's actually right here in the engine bay and I can fix it like right now with that little, um, little two female end adapter thing. Um, so I think I'll be able to fix it tonight. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, I'm going to get... I'm gonna get some soapy water and see if I can show you guys where the where the uh, leak is on camera. The leak is right here. It actually looks like it has some heat stress. Let me show you what's going on here. So uh, this is the air hose that goes this way towards the bag, and then it comes down and then goes underneath the car uh, to the manifolds. So as you can see when it rests right there you can pretty much see exactly what's happening. Um, I think it's getting too hot on whatever this is. I don't really know too much but whatever this piece of metal is down here if the camera will focus away from my hand this piece of metal and then you can actually see it in the in the line right I don't know if I can point, 
right where the shadow of my finger is pointing, right there. You can see the line has a little bit of discoloration in it. Let's see. Yeah. So the line right there, it's a little brown right here, and I think that shows a little bit of heat stress, and especially on this curve that it's on, it has a little bit of a bend to it. All right, so we did find the source of a leak, and I think it was the combination of the line being so close to the engine, it was actually touching metal in the engine bay, which is probably hot, especially when the car is running, obviously. And especially being on the curve that it was, um, you saw that it had a little bit of a bend to it, and you can see that it turned um, brown, which I think is um, a sign of heat damage. So I think it, just between the heat and the bend that it was on, it just got stressed too much in one spot and leaked. I think with how that was set up in that area, I think it was going to eventually happen, and it finally went. So I don't think I can fix it right now. I'm not sure if I'll just be able to patch it up with that little connector just because of where it's at, but. All right, guys. So I'm going to try and fix the hose. So I'm gonna take this, I'm going to basically cut out the part that has the hole in it, and then just plug either end into this, and then everything should work fine. I might have to reroute it. Um, I might reroute it a little bit just so that the heat doesn't get to any other part of the hose. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead I'm going to use this PVC cutter actually, which is what we use for the rest of the air hose and it cuts perfectly and it leaves a really clean cut mark um, and it doesn't like mess up the hose in any other way. So I'm going to cut it and hopefully get this on there and then uh, hopefully it should work. Alright guys, as you can see I have the adapter on. I cut, basically I had the hose here and I just cut out a section where the, um, where the leak was. And then now I'm just going to have to connect that in the hose into here um, and everything should be good to go. So here's the hose going to the bag, here's the adapter, and here's the hose going to the manifold. So they are now connected, the leak is now gone, in theory it should work. In theory the bag should work. Um, I think the spot that I just put it in is better than where it was before. It's a little bit tighter, a little bit more snug and it's uh, farther away from the heat source, so it should work out, I think. Alright guys, as you hopefully can see, this is the bag that had the leak in it. As you can see, we're holding 56 pounds of pressure pretty constantly now. So, I'm probably speaking too soon, but it looks like we're okay for the moment. I'm definitely going to um, run a calibration on it, because that will lift the fronts to, I believe, 100 PSI, um, and then back down slowly and then such. So I'll probably leave it and let it sit overnight at like probably 70. I want to see if it can hold that pressure at least overnight. Um, and then after that, if everything's fine, after the overnight test, then I'm going to run the calibration. But as of right now, it looks like we're golden. And let me show you um, where it's tucked, uh, where the line runs now as opposed to where it was. So, before the line was coming out of the same place, but instead of being tucked away where it is now, you guys can't really even see it. There it goes, it goes right in between, it goes right under this actually. Um, it's tucked under there, it looks pretty clean right there. I don't know what these hoses, these metal hoses, I don't know what these are. I don't think they have a heat component to them. Um, I don't, I don't really know what those are. They might, no, they shouldn't have a heat component to them, I don't think. But this definitely does because it's connected to the engine. So before the hose was coming from this, and it was going to the same place, but it was touching this giant metal thing, which I'm assuming gets very hot. And so now it's nice and neatly tucked away, and I don't think it's going to get anywhere near a heat source again that is going to cause that. And then anything else it's touching is just kind of like soft plastic so it uh, shouldn't even be a problem now all right guys so I'm pretty happy I was finally able to fix something by myself and I don't think I ruined it any more than it already was so if you guys liked the video 
go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or concerns or if you want to leave any suggestions for videos you want to see, leave them in the comment section down below. But otherwise, you guys take care and stay moist.